and the beautiful people from all over the world showing up down here in the meatpacking district. We're gonna go try to check out some shows tonight. Hey, this is James Conn, the guy on the bike. Uh, are you gonna be at uh, Stanley Whitney? <laughs> gonna be running in here. Aminger, McHenry, and Yohi to see a show by Judy Fab. Oh, Robert Storr, Charlie Finch. Well, the title of this show is Five Decades. So I guess that means that Judy's been making work since she was two? Something like that. A quick sweep over the front gallery here. This piece is from 1990. And I guess you would have to say that one of the great things about Judy is she doesn't get in a rut. She moves around and uses a lot of different ideas and materials. I would have to guess that this has got to be one of the more recent pieces as well. And I did look at the price list and some of the larger pieces are up to 150 grand. Well, I think this is one of the punchiest pieces in the show. It's really uh, pushing the color and the straight form. This is beautiful. It's almost like she's taking a Mondrian and cut it up with a jigsaw and peeled it back and twisted it and tied it in knots. Nice. This is Irving Sandler. And I think this piece is actually the newest piece in the show. This is 2010. I think what she's got in here are some collapsed Chinese lanterns and some paper mesh. Well, as you can see, the show is packed. Some nice collages here. And the shaped frames are nice. It's got a nice color sense, too. She's got lists of different types of skeletons, mushrooms. This is a beautiful large piece and she's got some doilies and other fabric things. It's got a very uh, oriental feeling to it. Well, this is the back room. But, as you can see, there's not a lot of room to uh, walk around and get a chance to contemplate the work. And the other problem is that they didn't have a list that has the titles and medium and stuff, so just gonna 
fly by the seat of our pants on this. It's a large piece, it's mostly wood and maybe some PVC pipe. This is kind of fun. She's uh, engineered some little props here to hold some of her cantilevered forms out. And some of these look like she might have even printed them in woodcuts. I think one of the important things about uh, Judy Pfaff is that she was a very early practitioner of what became recognized as maximalist art. This is nice. This is a lot of wire stuff coming out of Alan Serrett. Oh geez, here's the artist right here. Well, I think at the time, so we're talking maybe the late 70s, early 80s, Judy was kind of responding along with the pattern decorative people against the, uh, the austerity of minimal art. And uh, it's really packing this stuff on there. Let's see if we can get back into the inner sanctum. This is a great collage piece. It's in fluorescent paper and disco tape. Metal flaked and morayed reflective tapes. And there's a whole generation or two of artists now that are doing work like this that looks a lot like this, but they don't even know that they were kind of following in the influence of Judy. This is a beautiful large garage. And I would say that Judy also was kind of influenced by people like Frank Stella, but this is great, these are fishing floats. Rather than getting into the high tech and uh, exotic materials and technology, she was doing this with very simple, pathetic and uh, crappy materials. So this is a quick run through of Judy Pfaff, five decades here at Aminger, McHenry, and Yohi on West 22nd Street in Chelsea. Thanks, Kate. Oh, the decorate is kind.